Ah, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come, my favorite time of the year, the time you may have been dreading since uh, class started this year. The time to talk about human reproduction. We all get real upset about it, uncomfortable, but there's no reason to because it's really just a love story of when spermy meets eggy. It's a story of how all of us got to be here. It's an important story for us to understand the science behind how a human is actually made. So let's get into it. Males, um, you know, boys, as some people call them, men, if you will, make sperm. Um, sperm is made in one part of the males, the testes or testicles, whichever. It's a funny word either way. And they start doing this at puberty. Um, they make somewhere in the neighborhood of a million sperm a day, give or take. That's a lot of sperm, like a lot. Um, and they do that uh, pretty much for the rest of their life. Now, if the sperm is not used, it's basically like broken apart and then reassembled into new sperm by the testes because we want to protect that genetic information. If you don't know, testes kind of just hang around out in the middle of everything. So they're very vulnerable to um, damage and to those parts being affected by the environment. So we want to keep that sperm fresh um, and um, reassemble it, remake it every day. Um, also, because males make so much sperm, you know, like, it's kind of impossible to think how they get anything else done. Females, on the other hand, make eggs. They make eggs in the ovaries, and the ovaries, I'll draw you a picture here in a minute, are tucked way up inside of the female body, um, and they're made 100% before girls are born. So once a girl is born, she doesn't make any more eggs the rest of her life. Um, all of her eggs are there before she is born. All of her meiosis has happened before birth. Never again, whereas in males, interestingly, all of their meiosis happens um, after puberty. So the ovaries, there's two of them, and they're tucked inside of the pel pelvis of the female. They're very, very tiny. This is a very large image for you. And the ovaries are connected to the uterus, which is the home of a baby, by these beautiful uh, little antenna-looking things called fallopian tubes. So inside of the ovary, there is an egg. And every month, an egg is released, and it travels down the fallopian tube into the uterus, and that little egg waits for sperm charming to arrive every month. A new egg waits for sperm charming. Um, but for the most part, you know, she just sits around. And during that time, the lining of the uterus thickens. And it does that so that if sperm charming does arrive and uh, we have, you know, a baby starting to form, then there's a nice environment for that egg, a nice warm, tissue-filled environment if the egg is fertilized. But... Pretty much every month of a woman's life, sperm charming does not show up. And so at the end of the month, the tissue breaks down and it all travels out of the female in uh, what is called the menstrual cycle or the period. And it all comes out of the female. Some girls, it's three days. Some girls, it's seven days. Um, it's kind of uncomfortable, but it's not truly blood. It's the tissue that was in the uterus waiting for that child, but the uterus wants to clean up every month and make new tissue because we want a really clean environment if a child is formed. We don't want old tissue in there because we got to have good genetic um, stuff going on. So then the next month, the next ovary does the same thing, drops an egg, travels down, waits for some charming, tissue builds up, we wait a month, and then still sperm charming does not arrive. So then all of that tissue travels out month after month, month after month, year after year. Um, this happens. One egg every month, tissue builds up, tissue drains out. It seems really tedious. Um, and it kind of is. When all that tissue comes out, a lot of times that, that pelvis has to um, contract because it is a muscle. And so it causes um, discomfort and cramps for females. They lose all of that blood and that tissue, which sometimes can cause like a mild anemia. It's not a very fun time. So let's say that this month the egg releases from that ovary. Uh, but there is some sperm, you know, like a million of them racing towards the egg. And one of them gets there and fertilizes that egg. Now, only one can get it at a time. Some people are like, oh, what happens if two or three get in? It doesn't happen. Because as soon as one gets in, 
the egg shuts out all of the other sperm. So the fastest sperm gets up there, um, he gets into that egg first, and then we go from an egg and a sperm to a fertilized egg, which is called a zygote. This is the first cell of an organism. That's also where we get the word homozygous, heterozygous. It's referring to what's in that first cell. So um, the zygote travels down into that uterus, and one cell becomes two cells, and two cells becomes four, and four becomes eight, and eight becomes 16, blah, 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 until it's a giant ball of cells. And once we get to a large enough ball of cells, we get an embryo. Um, and that embryo is a ball of identical cells. And then those embryonic cells specialize. And some the ones on the outside become skin cells, and the ones in the middle become bone cells and nerve cells. And all of that then grows into a fetus, which keeps growing. This is my amazing whiteboard animation. Eventually, the fetus turns upside down if a mother is lucky. And nine months later, the baby heads out. Nine months of mitosis of the cells copy and divide, copy and divide. We get childbirth. Dun, dun, dun. So meiosis made the eggs and sperm, but mitosis is what caused all of the cells in the body to develop a child. So the baby comes out, and all the other parts that go along with the baby come out. Um, and during the time of pregnancy, there is no egg released when a woman is pregnant. Um, so there's no periods when a woman is pregnant either. The ovaries hold on to all of those eggs. And usually for um, a couple of months after a woman has a child, um, one month, three months, some women more, some women less, there's a lot of things that play into that. Um, once that uterus is all cleaned out and all healed up and returned to normal, then um, the body is ready to have another child, to make another child, okay? So, in the womb, womb is another name for uterus, uterus is a sciencey word, we get an egg that has 23 chromosomes. The egg meets the sperm, which also has 23 chromosomes. They combine together in a process we call fertilization to give us 46 chromosomes, 23 pair, in a zygote. The zygote undergoes mitosis over and over and over and over to give us many cells, which is our embryo, a ball of cells. Then we get even more mitosis, more copy and divide, copy and divide, copy and divide. So we get some specialization of some different types of cells where we start seeing different body structures in that fetus, that thing growing inside of a mother. And then the child is born and we get a new born, okay? So we get nine months of mitosis. As soon as that fertilization happens, we go right back to mitosis. There isn't a lot of meiosis happening inside um, of a body. In females, it's all done before they're born. In males, well, I guess there's a lot happening in those testes. Just lots, lots of meiosis all the time in boys. Um, but that fertilization gives us a, a zygote. That's where we get that homozygous, heterozygous, um, which tells us what genes are in that first cell. And then because it's mitosis, all those genes are in the rest of the cells. So I know this has seemed like a lot. Hopefully it wasn't as uncomfortable as you thought it was going to be. It's going to get a lot better when I tell you about the story of childbirth. Aww. So what about special cases of, uh, you know, fertilization and all that? That is our next video.